Yes. Well, greetings to you once again, my brothers and my sisters in Christ Jesus. I greet you in that name that's above every other name, in the name of Jesus Christ. Every knee bows, every tongue confesses, because He, the Lord Jesus Christ, is Lord, and He's above it all. And in Him, we live, we move, and we have our being, and we continue on in such a time as this, doing the things that God has for us to do according to his plan, according to his purpose, according to his good pleasure. Now, um, what are the things that we have now continued to see and go forward in? Because we're living in an, an unprecedented time. Uh, in fact, the whole construct of time has now gone out the window. People, now I'm not saying just from a spiritual standpoint, I'm saying from even a physics standpoint, people are beginning to examine things from a quantum physics side, there's there's videos out there and speeches out there from people in some of the smartest colleges in the world that have been looking at all this stuff and saying, wait, the very the very constructs of our thought process on what life is and how things work is uh, doesn't work anymore. Because as they learn more, they realize that what they thought before is now no longer valid. <clears throat> So space-time, things like that, things that are foundational precepts, just givens, uh, things that just are assumptions within certain scientific communities for you know, ages and ages now, um, they're being brought into question because they don't hold up under scrutiny and they don't hold up under the new information that's being discovered. <laughs> um, so, so... That being the case, um, well, you know, actually, what it does do is that all of the scientific discoveries that come out, all of the new revelations in these other areas, you know, whether it be advanced mathematics or whether it be, um, you know, just just different, you know, uh, different levels of understanding, they all reinforce true spiritual principles true true things that, that God has put into his word you know one of the one of the, the struggles that people have had though is that because they've not been taught the truth and they've been taught a lie or they've been taught something to to perpetuate somebody's own personal agenda they've they've missed <laughs> The foundational things that would actually uh, propel them forward into greater understanding because and, and, and incredible knowledge. My people perish for what? For lack of knowledge. They don't know. They don't understand. They don't have the... They, and they live in a line of delusion. And in that line of delusion, they're destroyed. Because they don't know that... <clears throat> You know, living next to that one hazard is actually killing their life. They don't know. Now they, you know, they're just they're doing the best they can, but they don't know. If they knew, they would move. You know, it's just a little bit of good knowledge at the right time, properly applied, and all of a sudden everything changes. Things are good. You can move. You can shift. You can be out of one position, one place, one possible bad thing, and all of a sudden your entire prospect can shift and change. Now, <clears throat> because of the misteachings, because of the deliberate uh, misrepresentations of the truth and the word of the living God, we have so many of the issues that we have. And it's not until people are willing to come out from among them, touch not the unclean thing, and God will receive you. Until you're willing to be separate and go at it alone if you must <clears throat> in order to know and have and experience and walk in the truth and unless you're willing to do that you won't find it because if you're going to ask, seek and knock you're going to go on a journey um, and you've got to be willing to do that now if you're not willing to do that then you don't ever experience it you don't ever know it but if you are willing to do that it may take you on a lonely path <clears throat> but you will find and you will, if you seek the truth, you're going to find it. And you're going to find Jesus. Now, um, okay, let's give some examples of this deception and this delusion. <clears throat> well, so what did Jesus say to Peter 
when he said, okay, Peter, whom do you say? Uh, so, okay, first he's talking to the disciples. Who do people say that I am? Some say that you're John, that, that you're Elijah. Some say that you're a prophet. You know, some, uh, all these people have their opinions. But then Jesus said, but who do you say that I am? And Peter responded, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Now, Jesus' response to Peter, and we've talked about this before, Jesus' response to Peter, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, that, that flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my Father who is in heaven, he's revealed this to you. And I tell you, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. One scripture used and twisted has been used to build the entire institution of the Catholic Church to give the legitimacy of the Pope because the entire institution of the Catholic Church is built on this apostolic or this this papal succession from Peter because they say I'm going to give you the keys you know whatever you um, whatever you uh, Bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So, all right, okay. So, with Peter, what did Jesus say? Jesus said, um, All right, who do you say that I am? Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Flesh and blood hasn't revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And upon this rock, now you're Peter, you're, you're little Petros, Petros. You're the little tiny rock, Petros is, and upon this Petra, upon this big rock, I'm going to build my church. The big rock. What's the big rock? The revelation of who Christ Jesus is. Christ in you, the hope of glory. And what did he say? That it's not flesh and blood that revealed it to you, but it's my Father who's in heaven. So upon the revelation of who Christ Jesus is, and that birth in the Spirit, that, that understanding that is brought by the Father, because no one comes to this to the Father unless the Spirit draws them, right? Okay, so that that birth process, that revelation, that understanding, that spiritual thing that takes place inside of a person, that takes them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan unto God, that thing that puts their life on the solid foundation and builds it on the rock who is Christ, that is what I'm going to build my church upon. The revelation of who Christ is. Not Peter the person. Not Peter the person. But that revelation. That's And that's the revelation that God has built His church on in your life, in your heart, in your spirit. Has that not been your experience? Has that not been... <clears throat> what it is that God's done in you. I see, even Peter, Peter didn't even succeed Peter in the in the hand down of the papal line. Because he, when he denied Christ, he broke that line right then and there. And God had to restore him. So, now what has that misteaching done? Well, when people have gone with the misteaching, they've used that to garner resources, they've used that to enslave the people, they've used that to get people to commit themselves to building all of these buildings all over the world, all of these places, all of these resources, and, and the institution itself, if you look today, um, has been become a haven for pedophiles and child molesters. I'm not, I, I'm, this is what's in the news. This is what's out there. That, I mean, I saw an article uh, in the British press <clears throat> that discussed where the Pope was saying himself that they anticipated that some 4% of their priests were pedophiles. Now, this is what they know of. I mean, that's literally thousands, thousands of them that they knew of. Think of the damage that was done under that system because of a misteaching. 
perpetuated by a misteaching and a twisting of the word of God. So, you know, if you live the, the, the actual truth of the word, you experience the actual result of that truth. You experience the actual blessing of that word. But if you live a misrepresentation, then you live in another level of bondage. Jesus had, he went after people on that. He said, look, you guys, you're, 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 you're blocking people from entering in. You yourselves don't enter in when he's talking to the Pharisees. You yourselves do not enter in and you block others that would enter in. That's been history. They won't go in and they'll block you if you want to go in. So, oh, and I tell you, there's, there's, now when Jesus talked about giving the keys to Peter, not key, singular, keys. I've been, I've been, oh, I've been thinking about that one and I feel like God's been showing some pretty cool stuff about the keys to the kingdom and the keys well what well, okay well what does a key do a key um, it unlocks something it unlocks something that previously was locked previously was withheld previously could not be accessed and now it is but you still got to know what key goes into what door and you still have to open the door so it's not a passive thing you can have the keys but not use them and in order to use the keys you gotta you gotta know which key does what and you need to use it so the keys to the kingdom and we talked a little bit about this in some previous audios you guys can go check those out <laughs> but um, with the keys they're yours in Christ Jesus is part of the revelation of Christ in you. It's part of your access point to what you have while you're here on the earth. So once you are following Christ, and once you have that, that revelation of Him in you, once you've moved from darkness to light, from the power of Satan unto God, you've got keys. You've got spiritual armor, you've got keys, you've got, there's so much that's yours, it's your inheritance now. Not sometime way off in the future. Now that you can use and access. And when you use the keys, you can go from one state to another state. One, one, you can go through a paradigm shift in the same configuration. So, I mean, the way, the way that I, I the easy way to explain it is... You know, you can have, you can be standing in, so say there's a wave that's coming onto the, the shore. Well, somebody can be in the place where the wave is crashing and getting smashed by it. Somebody can be beyond the wave, so they, the wave just passes underneath them, and they don't actually see or feel the effects of it. Somebody else can be on the shoreline watching everything happen. It's all still the same wave, right? So depending on what your position is will affect your perception, your experience, and the effect of that action and what takes place. So when you utilize the keys that God has given you, you can actually shift and switch your state from the realm of the spirit and your paradigm can be changed. Your experience can be changed. Now, you see hints of this occasionally when people say, um, when, say, for example, they, they say, this is where I was at. Um, and then Christ came into my life and all of a sudden I'm a different person. All of a sudden everything changed. All of a sudden the things of the world grew strangely dim. All of a sudden my priorities shifted. Okay, what is that? Well, Christ is, I, it's, I, so Jesus Christ is key. He's a key. He unlocks. He's the foundation. 
I am. It's a key. When you use that, when it's there, when you access that, when you go in and out, and you go through that, all of a sudden your experience changes. You've gone from darkness to light, and from the power of Satan unto God. So, that is just one, though. There's more. And it's exciting. It's an exciting study because in the process... Um, okay, yeah. You guys want to know a few more? Okay, here, I'll give you I'll give you a few more. All right, here's another one. The cross. The cross is a key. Death to this world. That's a key. Because when something is dead to this world, this world no longer has a hold on it. So you can no longer be kept in a previous position um, because now... You know, you, you're, you're not bound into that state because you're dead to that old state. And when something is dead in this world, this world no longer has a hold on it. It leaves this world. So the cross is a way that you, and it's a key to going from, to, to dying to this whole thing, to dying to this whole reality. And once you've died to this reality, you can go on into the next one. While your paradigm may still be here. So you, you may still be in this primary consciousness, but you're not bound to what you were once bound to because you've moved through. Um, okay. Uh, let's, let's, go, let's go to another one. Um, you know, I think I... I uh, feel like there's something in the breath, in the breathing, Yahweh, Yahweh, breathing. <clears throat> Jesus breathed on them, but it's the breath of life in us. I think there's something to <clears throat> the breath and breathing that is an uh, amazing key to, I mean, there's so many things that happen there with health and with well-being and also just bringing you into the present. There's, there's something there that's just, it's so simple, it's accessible to all of us at any given time, just to breathe. And, um, you know, I, it's just, it's one thing that's just there. Now, I want to look into that a bit more, because it's a fascinating, fascinating study. But, you know, the keys to shifting your paradigm, shifting your experience so that if you don't want to be smashed by the waves you change so that you don't have to be you know there's a lot of times that I mean when Jesus went to the cross he went to the cross because that was what God had for him to do you know, when, he, when he did that and did that for us because he said look I can get 12 legions of angels right now all I got to do is ask for them. They'll, they, and, and I'll be out of here. But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled? And if there was no need for the scriptures to be fulfilled like that, he would have been out of there. Because why? Why would he have gone through that just for the sake of going through that? You know, he, he did that because there was no other way. He did that because there was no other option to create and to have for us our restoration. There's no other way. So he had to do it like that. So, um, for us, that was necessary. But nobody took Jesus' life from him. The whole time that he was on the earth, he walked to and fro. He, when people tried to come make him a king, he just slipped from among them. When people tried to toss him off the, the hill, he just slipped through their midst. Sometimes he would hide himself. Sometimes he would just walk through them. Sometimes he would stay there and preach boldly in the, in the synagogue. Nobody would lay a hand on him because he would speak the truth. And they were afraid. But Jesus was an example of absolute pure freedom. Yet obedient to the will of God. 
in Christ Jesus, you've been set free. And we get set free, and then we choose to follow him. We make ourselves a bondservant to the Lord Jesus Christ. God sets us free, and it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. And that, you know what? Um, here's another key, um, is uh, not wanting anything. What is a profit of man to gain the whole world, yet lose his soul? Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? All right, what do you want? What do you want in this world that you're willing to give up? That which Christ Jesus has put in you in exchange for. Well, whatever that thing is that you want will be the hook that the enemy will use to snare your soul. But if there's nothing that you have in this world that you want, and if what your desire is is for Christ, then you'll have Him. And when <clears throat> if, there's, if there's nothing in this world that you want, there's nothing that, that they can hook on to. If you're dead to this world, then what can they give to a dead man? If you're being led by the Spirit, what are they going to do? Jesus laid down his life of his own accord, only to take it back up again. You know, we, as followers of Christ, we get that same beautiful, incredible privilege and joy. We lay down our, our lives of our own accord, only to take it back up again, to follow him. <clears throat> and if God says, this is where I want you to go, that's where we go. If God says, this is what I want you to do, that's what we do. And when we do those things and when we follow him like that, we find fulfillment, we find pleasure, we find purpose, we find reason for being. You know, in the world, you'll never find reason for being. You know, you can find, you can buy momentary happiness in the world. You can buy um, <clears throat> some relief and some respite, but you'll never find peace. And you'll never find fulfillment. Whereas if you're in Christ, if you're in Christ, you can be put into a difficult place, difficult situation. You can be in the midst of prison, because God's done that with how many of his followers? And you can be in prison and you can have peace. You can be in prison and you can be right in the center of the will of God. That was Daniel's experience when he was in the lion's den. He was put in a difficult spot, but he did not waver, did not falter. He held on to the truth and he held on to who he was in Christ. And in doing so, he experienced the victory and the salvation of God. <clears throat> Evil men rose up against him. Evil men tried to destroy him out of jealousy, out of pride, out of just malice, out of um, the work of the devil that they were part of. But Daniel held on, trusted God, and, you know, he would have gone to his death <clears throat> just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They would have gone to their death had God not showed up and intervened. And look at the level of intervention. My gosh. Daniel in the lion's den, he just shut the mouths of all the lions. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they, he, his angel walked with them in the fire. And they didn't, they, they came out, they weren't even cinched, nothing. Their clothes didn't even smell of smoke. Because all of a sudden they were in they were in the fire, but the fire had no effect on them. The king had to ask them to come out, because he couldn't go in after them. He couldn't go and access the place that they had gone into. His limitation, the great king, was now met his wall of limitation. And he could see you know, the Son of God walking with them. Listen, brothers and sisters, we live beyond the limitation of this world. <clears throat> and as time goes on, <clears throat> those that are around us will see 
and know and understand. Now they may not repent, but they will understand. Because God is with us. And God is with his people. And in the process of all that's taking place, the challenges that we face, God is with us. You know, guys, it's it's not going to be, we're not here for that long. We're not on this planet and in this world and in this life for that long. So the reason and the timing that we're here, focus your heart and your mind, keep your eyes on Christ, ride the wave, trust Him, because God knows what He's doing. He knows what He's doing with His people. He knows what He's doing with your life and your time and your window here. If you have frustrations, take them before Him. If you have things that you need to pray about, pray. Pray. Ask Him. But also, you know, remember with what Christ did in the Garden of Gethsemane. He closed it out always with, Lord, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. That's the place of freedom. When it's when the prayer and the desire is, Lord, your kingdom come, your will be done, not my will, but thine be done. Jesus practiced that his whole life. So when it came time for the big one, he was ready. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego practiced it their whole life. So when it came time for the big one, they were ready. When it came time for the big one, people were ready. And, you know, you want to be ready. You know, you're, you're going to do what you practice to do. You're not, it's, it's not going to be... Um, <clears throat> You know, sometimes people think that in the press that they're going to be doing something some other way. You know, they, they think sometimes, okay, yeah, if I, if I, when I'm, when I'm put under the, under the gun, that's when I'm going to really come up and I'm going to really show what I can do and what God has for me and who I am and all that. You know, it's, it's the small things that you do in your day to day that build the person you are it's it's this it's this small things so you know when you i mean okay scriptures say that if you're if you're faithful in little you'll be faithful with much so you know if somebody steals a little bit now they'll steal a lot when they have the opportunity to if somebody if somebody is um if somebody is uh um you know just the little things is going to affect the way that they do the big things. So, when we make it a point to follow Christ, and just even with the small things, we just make our commitment. You know, it's like, okay, I just, I want to do this the right way. Father, quicken me, help me, show me, teach me. Because I don't want to stray. I don't want to fall away in the press. I don't want to... I don't want to be led by my own understanding, uh, my own ideas. I want to be led by your spirit because I know there's a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. So I don't want that. I don't want the ways of death and the ways of my own thinking. I want your path, your life, your truth. And in the process of asking for that, seeking for that, knocking for that, looking to God for that, what he does is he gives you the strength he gives you the strength to be able to uh, to go forward and to do the things that you can't do and he'll quicken you you know there's a quickening that God will do in your spirit when you are going off track he'll show you you know this is this is your conscience. This is the speaking of the Holy Spirit. So we quench not the Spirit when God speaks to us. When God quickens you, you listen. When the Spirit of God, you know, stirs your heart in a particular way, you listen. Because you know that and, and you respond. So when God has for you to do something, you learn to respond. And the more that you do it, the more comfortable you get with it. The more you realize, okay, that's the way God speaks to me. I just need to do this. I just need to respond to this. 
and you'll see the blessing. You'll see the blessing in responding when God quickens you to do something. But it, it is a process. It is a learning. You know, you've got to shift gears because that's where the world is always going to try to tell you one thing. And God is going to be speaking to you in a different way. Sometimes the things that God will instruct His people to do, it may not seem necessarily logical at the time, but if you follow Him, you're going to see the amazing spiritual result and consequence of trusting Him and going forward in what He led and guided you to do. So, yeah, this is a... It's... It's a journey, it's a process. We continue on in it. God's given us incredible things so that we can live an overcoming life. You know, He wants us to overcome. That's always the instruction for every church, uh, for every body of believers, for every individual. However you read Revelation 2 and 3, whether you see it as a person, uh, church ages, different individual churches, an amalgamation of all those different things, doesn't matter because all of them were given the exact same instruction to him who overcomes in this world you're going to have trouble but take heart for I've overcome the world John 16 <clears throat> so that's there God's overcome the world Jesus overcame the world so in him we can overcome and he's given you tools in your spiritual walk weapons of warfare in your spiritual walk that you can use that will help you to overcome. You're not just passively sitting there getting pummeled. God has sent you in here because you are a spiritual warrior and you've been equipped and you've been equipped to do exploits, to do things in line with God's spirit and what he's quickened his people to do such a time as this on the earth. So you want to begin to move in that. Many of you already are moving in that. But take confidence. And take confidence and then as God shows you more, do more. As He gives you, puts more in your hand, now you've got more to work with. So use it. You know, the process for the child of God is one of... of uh, um, it's one, it is definitely a journey. You know, and we don't necessarily... Um, we don't necessarily have everything figured out for... Sometimes it takes a while, but um, once you once you start to understand a principle and a truth, you got to move forward in that. You got to take boldness in that. You know, don't let the devil rob you of something when God shows you what it is. When He shows you and He says, "This is the way to go. This is what I have for you. This is something that's part of your inheritance, part of who you are in Me." Take confidence in that. Move in that. My gosh. Don't don't let the devil rob you of your joy and your peace or your inheritance. Because the thing is, the devil's got nothing. Everything that the enemy has, he's stolen. And we're in Christ Jesus. <laughs> we, we plunder the enemy of our souls. So, you know, you, you, you are second to no one. You're an heir in Christ Jesus. You need to move forward in that knowledge and that understanding. God bless you. We love you guys. Drop us an email, faithmix at gmail.com. Say hi. We always love to hear from you guys. Um, keep on keeping on. And, uh, yep, 20 on 20 is going to be coming up this month. Um, and, yeah, so much. All right, love you guys. God bless you. Talk to you soon. Bye.